Welcome to part two of Chevy Volt Rebuild, where today we're gonna program the airbag module using the J-Box from my IM608. If you haven't seen it already, make sure you check out my first video on how to program keys to this car. I used the IM608 to program a set of keys to the car. When I got the car, it was all keys lost. I had no keys to work with. And I can't exactly program a module if I can't turn the car on. So I've already done the process of programming the keys. Now that I've got the keys programmed, I can actually open the trunk so I can get to the battery. I need to unhook the battery so I can put the control module in. Then I'll put the stable battery supply on it and we'll get to programming using the J-Box and GM's Tista web website. I have already disconnected the high voltage battery that is underneath the armrest in the car. Now I can disconnect the 12 volt system to be able to power down the car completely. Push that off to the side. Now back inside. The airbag module is located under the center console right behind the shifter. We're going to go ahead and take that off and replace it with the new one. This is a brand new unit directly from GM. So it has not been programmed yet. There is no VIN number in it yet. And it has to be configured to this car. Hook the ground cable back on to the battery. We have power. For this programming session, I will be using a Schumacher INC100. This is actually capable of producing 100 amps of consistent stable voltage to the vehicle. We're going to go to flash. 14.2 is good, 13.5 to 14.2 is good. Start, and then that's going to power the car. Now I need to plug in the hybrid battery, and we're ready to go. Now that I have the airbag module in, the dash is saying service airbag soon, and well, of course, because it doesn't know what it is because the module's just been replaced, and I have no information in it. So our next step is to do the J2534 programming piece of this device. So we're gonna go ahead and connect our J2534 to the car. We're gonna connect that to our Windows PC. Now, GM requires that you use a Windows 10 PC. So I am using a Surface tablet with Windows 10. Uh, make sure that you have all of your securities turned off. Make sure that you have all your firewalls turned off as recommended by the manufacturer. So now I am connected to my Windows PC with my J2534 device. My J2534 device is plugged into the car, but our first step is to make sure that our drivers are up to date on our J box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our start menu. We're gonna open up the Autel folder and the Maxi PC suite. You hear the Maxi PC Suite beep, that means it's communicating with the computer. You can see on the screen there that it says Maxi Flash JVCI, and I'm going to click refresh, and it shows that all of my updates are complete. Now, the reason I point that out is because I have seen so many issues with programming or communication be solved just by updating the JVCI. Make sure that it's current and up to date before you do any programming sessions, not just GM, any programming sessions. So let's keep going. I can close that out now. And we are on the AC Delco TDS website. I've already signed in at the top there and I have already purchased my VIN. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and click on my VIN number. Now I'm gonna go ahead and power up the car. To power up the car on this one, since it does not have a key, 
to uh, turn the ignition on. You just hold the start button down and it will uh, power up the car. Whenever we go through a programming session, we always wanna make sure that we read all the information, read all the instructions and make sure that we're set up properly. So we're gonna go ahead and click on OK. Now it's gonna give us some information about what systems we have to run. So, it, so it's saying that Windows 7 will be operational until January 14th of 2020, which is right around the corner. And anything else after that needs to be Windows 10. All the information about the computer and what we have to have, we have to have i5, i7, i3. Uh, this computer is an i7, so we have no issue there. Now this is new as of about September, October from GM, and this is a new process to be able to use an aftermarket J2534 device. According to GM and in their information, they say any J2534 device that meets the J2534 protocol can be used with a GM vehicle. It does not have to be the OE or uh, anything on their approved list. There's just so many J boxes out there, they can't approve them all. So this is their new process to be able to select your J box. Now, reading through this, it's a pretty simple process, couple clicks here and there, to be able to get to your J2534 device. Now, when this changed, the internet lost its ever freaking mind. Oh my gosh. The, no longer are J2534 devices supported by GM. Oh my gosh, the world is gonna end. They just change the process, people. Read the directions on the screen and it will go through that no problem. We're gonna go ahead and click on SPS because we're gonna do service programming. Oh, look, the same thing. Hey, you dummy, make sure you read the screen. We're gonna go down to the bottom. We're gonna click OT. And we're getting ready to start our SPS programming. We're gonna go ahead and select start SPS programming. The vehicle is on. It's gonna go through and make sure that our Java is complete and ready. And then it meets all the requirements that GM has set forth. So now we are connecting from the computer to the car. And we're gonna follow the instructions that it was given us before, J2534 tool. We're going to replace and program an ECU since we are replacing the airbag module in this car. And we're gonna go ahead and click next. So it's gonna give us a list of instructions. We're gonna go ahead and follow those, connect the J2534 device to the PC, make sure that everything is lit up. I do have all my lights on there. Click next, we're gonna select the vehicle. This is a Chevy. 2015 passenger car Volt. And then it's going to show, ask us what J box are we using? So any J box that you have registered to your tool or to your PC will show up in this process. So I have the JVCI and that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to click continue. It is going to now communicate with the car and try and pull the VIN out of the car. If we pull the VIN out of the car, then we know that the car is talking to the J-Box or just talking to the computer. We have our complete connection. So we're gonna go ahead and click Next. Now we have a list of all the controllers that are available for us to program, view, update. So we are gonna go down to the Inflatable Restraint Sensing and Diagnostic Module and we're going to do programming and setup on that. And we're gonna click Next. Before we do, one of the things I wanted to point out is we did another video on programming keys to this car. After I programmed keys to the car, it still wouldn't start. And the reason that it wouldn't start is because the airbag module had not been programmed. After this car was in a collision, it blew the airbags, but it also blew the contactors in the hybrid control module. When it blows the hybrid control module contactors, that is a safety feature for the first responders so they don't get shocked. And those have to be reset. To be able to reset those, I have to have the airbag module in place to be able to go through that process and reset everything. After I get the airbag module replaced, I'll go through the rest of these and do all that reset process. So we're gonna select inflatable restraint module and we're gonna click next. Okay, it's giving me all the part number history. It's giving me all the updates. Anything in red has a past update. I'm gonna do the one in green and that's the one it's selected. It's giving me an operating system. I'm gonna do the system and calibration. My current calibration code, any bulletins, nothing there. We're ready to go. We're gonna click next. Under controller, you can see the K36. It's telling me the IDs and it's also showing what the current is and selected is, and you can see that my module has no data. Those are the ones in green, so we're gonna select next. And now we're just gonna let it do its thing. Turn the ignition on. The ignition is on. We're gonna click OK. Okay, it wants us to cycle the key. 
So we're going to print it off. And then back to the on position. Click OK. Okay, there's no excess weight in it. It's getting ready to calibrate the yaw sensor. It is on a flat surface. All the tires are aired up, so we're ready to go next. Ignition is on. We're going to click next. Successfully completed. Press to finish. Okay, so the yaw sensor is now completed. Push finish. It's telling me everything that it has done. It skipped and it did pass on all the rest of the modules. We'll click OK. It says the action is complete. Now that I have the airbag restraint module programmed and set up and initialized, the yaw sensor calibrated, I'm going to go through the rest of these modules and do all the updates on them that need to be done. Just because there's an update on a module doesn't mean that an update needs to be done. Make sure that you're going through and reading the different calibration IDs and the information. On some modules, you may have multiple options for calibration updates. Make sure you're reading through those to see which ones you need to do. I went through all the TSBs on this car prior to programming, so I know what modules I need to go into and what ones I need to go ahead and update. I'm gonna do that off camera. That's a pretty easy process, and it's not very much fun for you to watch. Now that I have all the calibrations done, everything is updated, this car should be ready to go. I'm excited to see if this thing will start. So let's get everything unhooked out of this process. I went ahead and cleared all the DTCs, made sure that all the parameters were reset and that everything was ready so let's uh let's see what happens so this is the dash just from having it in the on position we're going to go ahead and power off and then we're going to push the brake pedal and push the power on and this is new i have never had the dash completely light up with all the battery information so this is good but you'll notice that you don't really hear the car running and that is because this is a hybrid electric car. And the car doesn't run until the battery runs out. So to be able to hear the car run, we have to open the hood. Now, the reason the engine or the internal combustion engine will start whenever we open the hood is because there's a hood switch on there. And they don't want mechanics to have the hood open and the car in the on position and the engine just turn on when they're starting to work on it. So let's see what happens when we open the hood. It's alive! It has been a long time coming to get this car running. To go from two wrecked cars into one, programming modules, replacing modules, replacing airbags, it has been quite the journey. But I hope that you learned something with this J2534 video that it's not nearly as scary as everybody makes it out to be. Make sure that you have the proper tools to be able to do it. Don't just go off and hook another battery to the other battery and see if it'll work. Make sure you have a stable power supply. Make sure that you have a good J2534 device and make sure that you have a good PC and internet connection to be able to put everything together. Now, this is an exclusive to Autel. This is uh, the same process with any J2534 device. Just make sure you follow the directions, go step by step, take your time and make sure that you're doing everything as you should per the OE manufacturer. I'm Chad from Flash Performance. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Make sure you check out the other video where I program keys to this car and click on that bell to make sure that you get all the latest and greatest as I release new videos. Thanks and we'll talk to you soon.